I know that some of you are a little bit chilly, so we'll get some one of the ushers to turn the furnace on now this morning. Man, it's warm, isn't it? Absolutely. But I want to guarantee you that some renovation plans that were coming to you in a few months, or at least hopefully a few weeks, uh, do include air conditioning. So just so you know, there will be some air conditioning, hopefully, in this building sometime soon. If not, until then, we're going to get big blocks of ice from the stadium and just people to fan you off. But it's so good to have you this morning in the house of the Lord and want to welcome you. If you're visiting, my name is Andrew Ball and I am the pastor here at this assembly. My wife Julie is a pastor as well and our third pastor, Pastor Hines, is living the good life out at Notre Dame Park in his RV, but he will be with us in a couple weeks again. I want to welcome you this morning. I want to welcome our special guests. We are very happy and privileged to have Glenn Tetford and his musical ensemble with us today. And of course, they'll be joining us in the worship service today and doing the service. And at 4 o'clock this afternoon at the East Lake Event Center, inside where there is air conditioning, we are going to be having a gospel concert free, open to everyone in the community. We've been advertising it. Anybody see it on the, uh, the digital bulletin board and that kind of stuff? Yeah, good. So we've been advertising it, sharing it, absolutely free. There's no bait and switch where there's an offering afterwards or something like that. Totally free. Come on in. We would love to fill up that place tonight. So invite your neighbors, and I would love for having you for you to be there as well. So this morning, it's going to be a little bit different, but I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Encourage you to worship and enter in. Some of the song lyrics will be on the screen. Others will not. But uh, it's good to have Glenn here. And I remember being about probably eight years old in our church in Lower Sackville. Glenn came to sing one time on a Sunday night, I think it was. And he was promoting his uh, CD. And for all the young ones, CDs are like small records and, and, and physical so Spotify and um, he, Midnight Cry I think it was yeah. the Midnight Cry and he was promoting that and I don't know if it wasn't a good concert or he never got a good honor ramp he never came back we only had him once but uh, it, it was good so I'm excited to have him again and I think it's been a while since you've been back to this assembly in this area and so we're glad to have you and so we're going to invite his, his, his band to come up would you welcome them as they start the <laughs> service and uh, a little bit later, we'll have a prayer time. Glenn is going to be preaching today, and we're in for a good service. Now, we'll let you know there's still Children's Church during the preaching time. And so if you have small kids, we will still have that for you. But again, I encourage you to enter in, sing along, and enjoy the service this morning. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, everybody. Well, it was great to be with you. I remember, yeah, the CDs. Yeah, and that's becoming foreign now. I was in a little town few years ago doing a af Sunday afternoon concert, had my CDs there, and a guy came up to me, an older gentleman came up to me, he said, Glenn, he said, do you have any round tapes? <laughs> <laughs> I think he meant CD. Well, it's great to be uh, here again, great to be with your pastor. La first time I s met your pastor... Uh, was at Miles Cove. He spoke one Sunday morning, and myself and my wife, yeah, he spoke, yeah. And like, I can't remember a word you said, but boy, it was awful good. <laughs> it was really good. But he was, he was tremendous, and yeah, we never ever forgot it, but we just can't remember what he talked about. But he was really good. So we're here today for the whole day, and my daughter will be joining us this afternoon in the concert. She's on her way out of town, on her way through. So she'll be joining me for some vocals tonight at the, this afternoon. And uh, I borrowed a band from uh, Bethesda that I've played with before. And I might as well introduce them now, I guess, so that you're not wondering who I got here. It's, uh, this is Richard Da. Many of you will remember Pastor George Da. And this is uh, George's son, Richard. This is Travis. <laughs> there you go. This is Travis Burt right here. He comes out of Botwood right here on the drum kit. And I met this fella a long time ago in the hospital. Uh, met him in the hospital, and then we had to take him home. So there's my brother and my second brother, Wade, and he's out of Bethesda as well. <laughs> anyway, it's really nice to see you, and uh, I hardly recognize anybody. It's been a while, but now that you got your mask off, I don't know who you are. And uh, we're going to sing some songs, share in the Word. I want you to relax. I want you to um, sing when you can, unless you can't sing. 
if you can't sing, you're just going to hum along, all right? Because you'll ruin the whole service. <laughs> Not true. Enjoy today. It's going to be a hot one. We're going to sing uh, some hymns. You know those hymns? Hymns like we had books. But uh, I grew up on them. And... Uh, We'll get warmed up in a second. All right. He took my sins away. I came to Jesus where a warning said. He took my sins away. Took my sins away. And now his love has made my heart so glad. church and after a few practices the choir members said to the pastor you have to tell him to quit he's off key he can't sing and you have to tell him he can't be in the choir see pastors get paid more than preaching they got to put up with a lot of foolishness and so he's supposed to call this guy in so he did 
He said, John, boy, I got some bad news. He said, what's that, Pastor? He said, the choir. Yes, I love the choir. I can't wait for next practice. <laughs> but you don't understand. No, no, no. I love, I, I, all my life I wanted to be in the choir. Well, the pastor, we have some bad news. What's that, Pastor? He said, the people in the choir, they, they, they said you can't. Oh, I'm going to sing. No, they said you can't sing. Why not? Because you can't sing. You can't sing because you can't sing. You can't be in the choir because you can't hold a note. You can't sing. You can't be in the choir. He said, I'll be in the choir till the day I die. And the pastor said, why? He said, Pastor, because it's like this. You can't preach, but you're still here. <laughs> That's some bad news. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well, the Spirit is within me, because you died but you rose again. Amazing love. My king would die for me. Sing it out now. Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I'm forgiven You were forsaken I'm accepted You were condemned I'm alive and well The Spirit is within me Because You died but you rose again Sing it everyone now Amazing love, how can it be that you, my king, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true, and it's my joy. time through I think you see I'm forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted you were condemned but I'm alive and you yeah Amazing love, how can it be uh, that you, my king, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. It sounds really, really pretty. Yes, sir. He brings times of a refreshing. He brings times of a refreshing. He brings times of a refreshing to my soul. Here we go. When I'm weary from the fight, trying to do what's right, he brings times of a refreshing. I thank you, Lord, that you are my Savior. 
leg here and you sing, come on. You're my strength and you're the rock on which I stand. You gave me life. singing here. <laughs> Woo. I didn't know it took two people to play a piano. Oh, you got a time machine up here. Like I'm, I'm going to press a button that wants to zap back to Stanhope somewhere. You got lots of bells and whistles on this baby, I tell you. You could sell half of that and still have a good piano. Woo. <laughs> My goodness, it's nice. It's hot up here, and uh, but I wouldn't dare ask you to stand. You would cramp up. So just relax. And notice, boys, we got a lot of fans this morning. <laughs> a lot of fans in church this morning. Good to see Rex and Arlene, long time friends, and uh, good to be with them again. Former uh, colleague of mine, we taught together for years. And uh, we stayed together for years, so it's good to see you. Other people that I know here this morning, it's great to see your faces. It's a, it's come home here, isn't it? Anybody home for the holidays? Anybody home for, did anybody come home? No, I wouldn't blame you. Oh, one person came home. <laughs> one person came home. Well, we scheduled this day for you. All the morning service and the concert. All for one person. <laughs> a few years ago down in Ramia, a guy uh, was come home here in Ramia, and 
and uh, CBC was down interviewing and uh, got this guy and said, uh, so anybody come? Oh, yes, he said, uh, me brother is coming home from mainland. Yeah, your brother, yeah, Sam, he's coming home. Well, has he been home? No, yeah, aunt been home in 42 years. Oh, Sam is coming home? Yeah, Sam is coming home, yeah. I haven't seen him in 42 years. He's coming home. Do you think you'll recognize him? No, my goodness, no, he haven't been home in 42 years. I, well, you think he'll recognize you? He'll know me. I haven't gone anywhere, sure. You, well, before the COVID, do you have COVID up here? Yeah. We, uh, <laughs> we were in Deer Lake doing a concert, and uh, my daughter had introduced me to this song, and um, she was singing it. And uh, after the song, a young fellow came up, um, and someone introduced him to us, and he was just recently released from prison in Stephenville and um, and as in as he was in prison he got to know the savior that can change anyone's life anywhere so when he came in he sat down to the service and he didn't realize what he was going to listen to he just brand new baby in Christ and when he sat down this is what he heard I'm no stranger to prison. I've worn some shackles, worn some chains. Now my sins are forgiven. I'm not going back. I'll never be the same. All my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday's gone. All my sins are forgiven. I've been washed by the blood. That verse again. You imagine when he sat down, this is what he heard. I'm no stranger to. I've worn some shackles, worn some chains. But I'm so free, I'm forgiven. Oh, I'm not going back no I'll never be all oh, the same. I'm not 
the same I'm the prodigal I'm returned I've been down, down the river. I'm not the same. I'm the prodigal return. As long as he's happy, I'm happy. <laughs> Good out there, man. Oh, we're enjoying. I'm enjoying it anyway. I'm sweating, but I'm enjoying it. Thanks, Ralph. <laughs> Ralph, you look good in the frame, man. <laughs> oh my. So we've gone through COVID, and uh, we're still alive. We'll be touching on that briefly for just a short devotional in a few minutes. I can't see the clock because it's all shaded out, so I think it's 11. And uh, so I think we've got a few more songs in this yet. Amen? You okay with that? All right. <laughs> so, uh, well, yeah, it's been a while since I've been back here. And uh, there's a group that I play with in Central, our regular, our regular band members. And... They had some Kamomir festivities this weekend, so they couldn't, uh, they couldn't agree to come. So this is a team that we've played together in Portagrave for a few years now at the Fisherman's Weekend. And so it's so nice to be able to just lock in and not have to go through a full rerun of practice. Just go by feel and go by hear, and, and that's what we're doing up here. So we're not here to entertain you, although if that's what happens, God bless you, but... Uh, we're here, like just what happened, like when we sing together, you realize it's not the band, it's, see, we, you gotta be careful with the worship band, and you gotta be careful with the word band, because come, people come to listen to bands, people come to sit back and, and see what the band's gonna do, 
that's not that's not worship. Uh, worship is when the group up here can lead you that way, and not towards the band. We'll try to do our best, and we you know trying to hit the right notes, but uh, it's it's not our it's not our objective to entertain. That's a tough business. But uh, and obviously uh, I saw the advertisement: great big billboard downtown, free. <laughs> like what's that all about? I don't know how many pastors I've, I've gone in to have services with them, and, <clears throat> and I said, so, Pastor, what do you want me to do tonight? And he said, well, I'll take up the offering and then give it to you. He never has. <laughs> no. I just sing and preach for three hours and get, get a stamp. <laughs> you know, church, church, is, uh, church is interesting. Uh, because we've we've become to realize that the building is a church, and when we leave it, we forget that the church has left the building, and somehow we've become indoctrinated into believing it's all this is it, the end all be all, right here, you know. Uh, but but this you know this is not it, and we'll speak about that in a few minutes. But church can be interesting, can be entertaining, and it can be dead. Oh yes, <laughs> the worst. Honestly, <laughs> really bad, like torture, like one church one night, a fellow died of a heart attack in pew number two, and the paramedics came in and took home 20 before they found the right fellow. <laughs> and, eh? Somebody should, should say amen on that one. But, it, you know, it, it, it can be an interesting place. Um, it can be a place to talk about, but usually it's talked about in a negative manner. And then we want our friends to come here. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Um, my mom and dad drove home one day in the car after prayers. <laughs> Little guys in the back seat, and mom says, what in the world did the pastor try to put through on this morning? And the father said, I know what happened. He got it on the internet and read it off once before he came here. And, now, and the mother said, and you know who was leading the worship this morning? I works with her up to Walmart. She's not fit to shoot. <laughs> and then the father said, and the drums this morning, me head is busting, me head is busting, me head is busting the drums. And the little fellow's going back and forth, back and forth. All of a sudden he said, Dad, and he watched him put in the offering. He said, oh, man, all the same. It wasn't a bad show for 50 cents. I want you to laugh at that, but I want you to internalize it and think about what it really means. That it's so much truth in that, because this is a place to come and enjoy together and to enjoy his presence. This is one that I recorded some time ago on a round tape. God is good, yes he is, he's good all the time. God is good, you know he He's good all the time. Search the whole world over. A greater thing you'll never find. He's not good just once in a while. He's good all the time. Here we go. God is good. Yes, he is. He's good all the time. God is good. You know he is. He's good all the time. in a while he's good all the time we've all had friends some let us down you know the ones i'm talking about at the very first sign of trouble they're nowhere to be found where well, my jesus stays when others go he'll never leave your side He's your friend in stormy weather. He's good all the time. Clap along now. God is good. Yes, he is. He's good all the time. God is good. Yes, he is. He's good all the time. Search the whole world over. A greater friend you'll never find. He's not good just 
Too many buttons for me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what do we do now when COVID is over? Hmm. I guess we'll find something else. This is a song that I found on uh, YouTube. You guys use that? YouTube? Or, like they say out our way, YouTube. <laughs> I got that on YouTube. Oh, boy, it's hot. Uh, when COVID was on, they installed some, one pastor installed a brand new unit in the washroom for drying your hands, eh? so you didn't have to shear the thing and that, you know. So. <laughs> this beautiful new model to blow air out and wash your hands. Sing happy birthday half a dozen times and dry your hands. Eh? Anyway, he had it up two weeks, and he took it down, and the board member said, Pastor, it's gone. Someone stole it. He said, no, I took it down. He said, why in the world did you take that down? He said, because someone from the congregation put a sign over it and said, for a sample of last week's message, press button. <laughs> a lot of hot air, eh? Oh, my. John never had this trouble, I guarantee you. <laughs> you're my joy, you're my peace, you're my comfort in time need, you're my refuge, you're my rock, the one I depend upon, 
the only road of hope when the light grows dim when the doubt comes crashing in you're my anchor in a troubled storm almighty god you're my joy you're my you're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge. You're my rock, the one I depend upon. The only road of hope when the light grows dim, when the waves of doubt come crashing in. You're my anchor in a troubled storm, Almighty God. You don't know that's not a. You guys still looking at my picture up there, and I'm trying to teach you a song. So this is the beautiful little song, so I'll walk you through it. You're my joy, you're my peace. You ready that? You're my joy, you're my peace. You're my comfort. You're my comfort in time of need. Good. You're my refuge. You're my refuge. You're my rock. You're my rock. You're the one I depend upon. Only road of hope. The only road of hope when the light grows dim, when the waves of doubt come crashing in. You're my anchor in a troubled storm, Almighty God. We'll do it again now. Here we go. You're my joy, you're my peace, my comfort. You're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge, you're my refuge, you're my rock. The one I depend upon, the only road of hope, the only road of hope when the light grows dim, when the waves of doubt come crashing in, you're my anchor in a troubled storm, almighty God. Then I'll go with the bridge, here it goes. You bore the cross, you bear the scars. Lord, you're my bright, my morning star. You gave me sight that I might see the kind of man I ought to be. You came to die to set me free, almighty God. You're my joy, everybody. You're my joy, you're my peace, my comfort. You're my comfort in time of need, my refuge. You're my refuge, you're my rock, the one I depend upon. The only road of hope when the light grows dim, when the waves of doubt come crashing in. You're my anchor in a troubled storm, almighty God. You're my anchor in a troubled storm. Troubled storm, Almighty God. Oh. <laughs> oh my, oh my. We sang this one in Windsor last Sunday night at a really nice concert in there, and. Uh, Really nice concert. I sang it, and I sang it in a low key because I found the congregation was better handling it D, which is a little low for me. But this goes back, and I say, I do it, and I'll be more tactful this morning. My wife got on my case a little bit. Actually, my daughter did. <laughs> She's a pastor as well. So I was talking about hymns, and I was kind of encouraging the singing of hymns because it's a shame that this big body beautiful written stuff has been put on the back burner and sometimes never remembered again. And it's kind of a shame. I like the new music, some, but some of the old I couldn't stand either. <laughs> and regards to new, Amazing Grace was new once. So I, the, the hymn thing, I remember when I went to church as a kid, way to remember, that, we went to church, we were given hymn books. Uh, melodies of Praise, the, the colored ones. Rick, you, you, yeah, you had red one, Rex? Green, oh, there's red and green and mauve. I had a mauve one. 
and there was white ones, and, and all pretty colors, and melodies of praise. And you took your Bible, you took your, your in book and Bible, tucked under your arm with your raglan on, and your hat. Now, I had a criff. Anyone know what a criff was? The pastors had the criffs. The little, like, untouchable hat with the feather sticking at the side of it. <laughs> Anyone remember those hats? So when you were a kid, if you got one of those, you'd arrive. That was your coming out. So you'd take your little book and go to church, eh? And, uh, and you'd sing the same hymns every Sunday. There was 300 in the book, but you only knew a half a dozen, dozen or so, and whatever you could play, three chords. And I remember you'd be sitting there with your hymn book, eh? But some, now when I sat with mom, I couldn't wait for a certain song. I think it was Amazing Grace 206. And when she'd open it, it'd be Sin Sins, right on down to the, and I'd be, I'd be going as fast, fast, fast as I could trying to get lunch. <laughs> sin Sins. And, and then, and then you'd be singing, and then you'd get to, and, and be awfully un awkward if, if you were sitting by someone that was not saved, sinner friend. Because you didn't know what to do when you opened your book. Because he never had a book. No, he couldn't bring a book. He was too tough. So you'd be there, and you're wondering now, if you passed an over, would he catch hold? Catch up. So some nights he, he, you know, timidly grabbed the corner. But some nights you'd stand up and offer, and he wouldn't catch up. So there you were. <laughs> singing, he's coming soon, but was on this page. <laughs> I remember those days a lot. <laughs> this is going to be a bit low, but... Redeemed thou I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by... There you go. Redeemed through his infinite mercy. His
was the red one, I tell you. <laughs> Great singing. Great singing. I'm going to sing one more song before I share just a, a few moments this morning. You've been so good on a warm on, a morning just to sit there. And, but uh, I'm enjoying it. Hope you are too. And uh, I, we just gone through COVID. And I uh, hope you've learned something. I have. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There's been times I didn't know right from wrong. In my lonely heart, Those lowly, precious hours, Jesus, let me know that I still his own. Through it all, is this for you to help me? Through it all, I. in God through it all through it all I've learned I've learned to depend upon his word thank God a praise on your lips in the storm he'll take you through sure if you never have a problem how can you know that God can really solve them how can you know what faith in God can really do Shine and rain through sickness and pain. I've learned to depend upon his word. Play it for me, Richard. Oh, 
on his word I won't deny him if I've learned to depend upon his word we bring it home on this one I've learned I've learned to depend upon his word upon upon his word yeah. Ooh, I'm gonna have the boys step down and just have a break isn't God good oh yeah yeah, we always need to share from the word of the Lord. And uh, so I'll, see, I'll get a break. I won't. <laughs> we'll keep singing because we get paid by the song. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great morning. Great morning with you. Fan club is going nuts over in Lewis. <laughs> We're going to share from God's word. We have most important part of being together. Uh, the work is great, and sometimes we find ourselves in a bit of an off state. However, I am still willing to go. I am not yet past the edge of the first heaven, but I can still get down. To, uh, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Uh, so he preached that morning, my father did on that text, and I was just playing with the piano as I went to the piano, and I struck a few notes and began to sing. Upon this rock I will build my church, the gates of hell shall tremble at its sight. Filled with power of the Holy Ghost and might, upon this rock I will build my church. And that's where that song came from. If anybody else says other, they, they are lying. <laughs> and so I'm not a football fan. I do watch the Super Bowl because it's just a thing to do. And uh, I don't watch much else. But I do know that there's an offense and a defense. And I don't know if you guys know, but apparently those multimillionaires play, uh, actually play, the ball is in play, actually play 14 minutes a night. The ball is actually engaged for 14 minutes. So that's seven for defense and seven for offense if you split it down the middle. Everything else is whistles, huddles, fellows hugging one another. I don't know who they're talking about. But that's what they say. The actual flight of the ball, the playing or running, it's in seconds and minutes. Not a bad check, but now they take some awful smacks to get it. But I don't watch it a lot, but uh, I do know there's an offense and a defense. Now, the Bible here, if you're not careful, you'll, you'll think this scripture means the gates of hell is, is kind of crashing against us, and we won't give up. We'll hold our ground as the gates of hell come against us. It says here, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. That is not a defensive statement from the Bible. It is an offensive statement. It means that the church, under the authority 
and under the right spirit should attack enemy territory and walk forward. Offense. Not hide away behind some shield. Not hide away behind some front line tacklers. But you're supposed to advance the ball, move forward. The gates of hell can't stand a living, vibrating church that's alive and well. That's the statement. And so now let's turn our attention to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Chapter 4. And probably one of my most favorite passages in the New Testament, maybe. But we have this treasure in an earthen vessel. Now that's a big statement. Because I don't know about you, but I'm going back to dirt if the Lord don't come. And if you don't come soon, I might go back to dirt sooner than I think. <laughs> I mean, you're going, you, you can fancy that thing you're looking at in the mirror up all you want. You can do all you want with it. It was born to die. <laughs> we come into this world waving goodbye. And boy, does the time ever fly. But one of those days, you're going to just die. And going to lay you in a box, and someone's going to have the nerve to walk by and say, Boy, you look some good. <laughs> Never told me that when I was alive. Don't say it then. And the one that drives me nuts, Oh, my Lord, he looks just like his self. Who are you supposed to look like? Elvis? They got some job done on it. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Full of formaldehyde. Yeah, that's great. But that's only the body, isn't it? And we are made of dirt. That's why they have to bury you or cremate you. Or like the fellow who got the call from Nova Scotia. He said, your mother-in-law passed away, do you want her buried or cremated? Both. <laughs> but we have a treasure in an earthen vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God. We are not here for us. We're here for him. And not of us. We are troubled. Sure we are. Look at the price of gas. I'm troubled. Aren't you? We're troubled on every side, but we're not distressed. Although we complain. We're perplexed, but, but we're not in despair. We're persecuted, but we're not forsaken. Cast down, but we're not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. So with that as a backdrop, let's just share for a few minutes. It's 10.37. I'll try to be 15 minutes. 11.37. <laughs> I tried to cheat. <laughs> Seems like we've come through COVID okay. Seems like it. Now it's monkeypox. You wait now. Dr. Fitzgerald next week will be telling us to give up bananas. <laughs> it's a real issue. It's a real issue. It's coming again. Something else is coming. Monkeypox. Two years seems like it's been taken from my life. How about you? It's like it's two years missing. It's gone. It's like people that you see every day or you saw every day or, you know, you, it's just gone. It's robbed. Yeah, fellowship, friends, gatherings, family, routine, things we took for granted were all of a sudden disrupted. You know, there was much debate, much tension, much opinion, a lot of fear, some confusion, a global phenomenon that brought the world to a standstill. Seems like a dream. We all had to change our plans and 
employment, travel, education, the economy. Who would have thought a virus that biologically speaking, we don't even know if it's alive? No, we don't. Don't classify it as a living thing. It only becomes alive when it gets in you. And then becomes a, you make your cells a factory, produce others. Interesting little thing. I would have thought a nuclear war would have brought the world to its knees. But not a virus. And yet we swing around like we got the tiger by the tail and everything is cushy and we're going to live to be 400. Ah, how something overnight can bring the world to its knees. Blew my mind. And the church, as some perceive it, was strongly affected, altered, disrupted, regulated. Some say persecuted. I don't believe it. Compared to my brothers and sisters in third world countries, this was a breeze. I, 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 yeah, inconvenience, but not persecution. But even if it was, pressure should do the church good. Inconvenience should do the church well. Obstacles should make the church strong. Pressure should cause us to spread. A few years ago, the coyote came to Newfoundland by someone. Who in the world would have brought it here? I have no idea. But anyway, if you've noticed and you listen at night, they're everywhere. My cousin was a, was a wildlife technician. I asked Truman one day, <coughs> I said, Truman, how come we can't put a bounty on those guys and get rid of them? He said, because coyotes react to pressure in a positive way. The female will come in heat more often when she feels pressure. She'll have more litters per year and more pups per litter. As soon as they feel the pressure, they explode. The guy had a starfish problem with his nets, a fisherman, so the story goes. He got angry. Every, every starfish he pulled in over the boat, he would cut to pieces and throw it back. If you have any biology background, you hear of regeneration, means the starfish, once cut in pieces, will now grow more starfish. And so while he was trying to get rid of the problem, he actually accentuated the problem and made it worse. Pressure can cause some things to spread. And I think COVID, if we were in tune and listening, and if our spirits were right, we would have learned that this two years was a time to become stronger. The church is much bigger than the general concept held by many. We sometimes fall into the trap of mainstream thinking that it's about me. Me. iPad. Because this is the world we live in. iPhone iTunes, MySpace, and the one that got me drove is selfies. <laughs> there was a time when having your picture taken, your snap, was honorable, and you had to get all dialed up. Oh, my wait now, wait now, wait now. But no, not now. And then you put that mug out on the internet and let it go all over the world. And really, I say, who cares? <laughs> and if we think those terms, we say, my church. And this is how I like it done. 2020 stats, 644 million spirit-filled Christians walked this earth. World's largest religion is Christianity. 2.7 million conversions to Christianity every year. It's not your church. It's his. And it's bigger than you. And it's bigger than me. And I'm so appreciative that this little Gentile was allowed in on it. Huh? You see, read the Bible and it's Jewish. Both Old and New Testaments filled with Jew and Jew information and Jew letters. I am not a Jew. And if you read the Bible, it's, they're God's chosen people. Even though they rejected him, they are still his people. But the great
great news is, is us Gentiles have been allowed in. And I'm so appreciative of that. And I have no right saying it's my church. I'm just a tag along. Amen? Grateful for his grace and mercy. This is big. It's best if we learn how he wants it done, not how I want it done. A few years ago, way back in Greek, Greek mythology, so it's a myth, a guy was walking by a pool, and for the first time in his life, he saw himself in the reflection. And he looked. He saw himself. His name was Narcissus. He saw himself. He saw himself. Apparently, he died by the pool. Sound familiar? <laughs> Narcissism. Preoccupation with self. Second Corinthians 4, 8, and 9. Paul will have nothing to do with this. It's not about us, that the excellency may be of God, that the death and resurrection of Christ might be manifest in me. Buildings we call churches, wonderful, decorated, hot, family, emotional, safe, easy to witness, easy to be a Christian here, orchestrated, many times traditionally orchestrated, many times predictable. That's got to be the worst. If you come here and it's predictable, you'll have to take you all home in an ambulance. Predictable. God is not into predictability. He's into life-changing experiences. He's into power. He's into presence. Being predictable. The only thing I can relate it to is being a Leaf fan. Any amens? You know they're not getting fat past the first round no matter what. This concept cannot confine the church. Upon this rock I will build it, and the gates of hell can't stop it. That includes COVID and whatever else from the monkeys come our way. But the religious agenda that we've created and passed down from generation to generation, this inside secret service where we're frightened to death to do anything outside, may indeed stifle the living victorious church. If we are living in a traditional thing where this is all we do on Sunday, come together and do this every day, if we live through it, we stifle what God had intended. We have goats. Our families, myself, my daughter, we have a little farm, we have some ponies, and she breeds the goats, Nigerian dwarfs. If you want one, give me a call. We have goats. <coughs> now, you pin them up, and things get messy and stinky, and there's a lot of head butting. You pin them up every Sunday. You got to follow me. You pin them up Sunday after Sunday. It'll get stinky, messy, and they'll butt some heads. But you let them out. And the same manure will spread all over the pasture. And things will begin to grow and flourish and turn green and look beautiful. I think we've pinned the goats up too long and little traditional assemblies and thought this was the end all, be all. I'll have us know tonight that although churches had a hard time staying open, I want to say publicly and if we're live streamed or whatever, I want to applaud and congratulate every pastor that kept this thing going and did everything they could within their realm to keep this thing moving during a difficult time when, when it, we didn't know what to do. But, but I'm so glad that I pastoral staff did all they could to do all they could for me.
corporate worship, worship, corporate worship, like we did this morning, that's so important. It's, it's, it's so comforting, so informative. God inspired and ordained, but let's not confuse it with the church. COVID was a time to reflect, clean up, gut out, go through things and figure out what really matters. I applaud the faithfulness of God that brought us through this. I miss the fellowship friendly, but my sanctuary was open 24-7 because I am the church. I am the church. The church is bigger than me, yet I am it. We are the church. Gentiles graciously welcome into his family. Wow. Depth matters as I begin to close. My spiritual conditioning to run this race called life, though enhanced by God's word from pulpits, leadership, expertise, worship leading, community of believers that I love to listen to sing and worship, it must be infused with resolve, dedication, and commitment, integrity, and discipline. And I would say strongly that spirituality is stabilized, not in hype, but in hard times. Your spirituality is challenged and stabilized in the toughest of times. My Uncle Boyd, St. John's, was a gardener from which I learned how to garden. I love it. He, he wasn't a traditionally or come across to me as a religious man, but I'll leave that with him and his Lord, or the Lord, whatever he chose to do with that. Can't judge any of that. But he taught me something spiritual. He said, Glenn, when you, the dry summer comes, don't sprinkle your lawn. Now, if, if I come back here in August and everyone's lawn is brown and dead, I'm not doing a thing. It's like the young fellow in Gander Bay that was standing up with his hands in his pocket. Sizing up situation and the lawn care truck from Gander went by with a load of sods aboard. And he said to his buddy, La, I get the job on, man, that's best me, La. And his buddy said, what, you're going to have a new pickup? No, I'm going to send me lawn to Gander to get mowed. Uncle Boyd said, Glenn, don't sprinkle your lawn. If you can't saturate it six to eight inches deep, don't sprinkle it. I said, why? He said, because all you're doing is you're teasing it. And some Christians had to be teased along with a little bit of hype and a little bit of new pastorate, but he can't vote you out. Now, what are you going to do now? with a new this, a new that, a new church, a new song, a new way, a new up, a new that. That doesn't do it. That's candy. We can't live on candy. We need something strong and stable. So Uncle Boyd said, if you go and he sprinkle it there, the roots will turn up, not down. The roots will seek the moisture at the surface. And if the drought continues, your lawn dies. But you leave it in the dry times, and the roots will extend downward and reach for moisture below. And it'll go dormant, and it'll turn brown. But you wait till the winds and the rains come again. And as soon as the times of refreshing are restored, up comes the grass, resurrected, because there's power in the root. And so I say, your Christianity is stabilized in your hard times, not in the hype. Now is not the time to quit. The church marches on. Individuals matter, building blocks of the church, not a service, but in his service. Serving, meeting, praising, learning, and leaning, not an emotional whim but a guided purpose. 
We are the church pushing back the forces of evil as we march forward. God's been good to me in COVID. How about you? I hated it. But compared to what he went through, wearing a mask wasn't that much to ask. There is a, a story told. The boys can come back now, and that's usually the way we do it. We have ways to do this thing, eh? This is just isn't this like the boys can come back. I want the music to come back. Order of service. <laughs> There's a story. It's not scriptural. But Jesus dies and he rises again. He ascends to the Father. And the angels gather around. And they're so excited to hear of his great exploits over death. And the angels gather, and he starts beginning, to, and they have so many questions. And Jesus tells them about his resurrection, his death, his resurrection. He tells them about the tomb. He tells them about all that. And then Jesus goes on to say, my work is finished. And one angel said, but what now, Lord? What now? What now? And Jesus said, well, I've left 11 disciples. And Judas had been gone by now. I left 11 disciples, and uh, they'll carry on the work. He did nothing to say about building a mega church or building a beautiful building, although we love them and we have to have them because we have to get together with family. But he did not say they're going to build a big tabernacle now and going to get her going, sing a fast song and let her rip. No, Jesus said, I've left 11 disciples who are well-trained, and they will take my message to the world. And the angel said, but Lord, what if that doesn't work? And he says, I have no other plan. So if the disciples of our Lord doesn't take his word and his presence as a church to the world, he has no other plan. We only come here to meet so we can do service when we leave. We come here to meet and learn and listen and enjoy and even smile. I hope you can. If you're here this morning and you can't smile in church, one of us has to be unhappy, and I'd rather for it to be you. That, that puts a whole different mantle on your shoulder when you think, I'm not going to church. I'm going to the meeting. And whatever I learn and glean from the meeting, I'll take with me to do some service. That's the church. That's what makes a difference, isn't it? Mercy never fails me. All oh, I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head. I will sing of your mercy. All my So, so good. Every breath that I am able, I will sing. 
Would you worship the Lord this morning? For he is good, he is faithful, he is true. This morning we've enjoyed the ministry of this ministry. Glenn and his team, we won't call him a band, and his team. Before we leave today, we have several prayer needs that have been brought to my attention. And I uh, want to read them in your hearing today. We're going to pray before we finish. Praying for a young man named Hunter Pike today. This is in our area. Uh, his family has asked us to pray, really sick. Praying for a young woman named Shauna. Praying for a man named Carl. Praying for a young boy named Gus, Angus. We've been praying for him, and the Lord's been doing a wonderful work in his life and bringing him back. Bringing, <coughs> praying for Lily this morning, young girl from here. Praying for Alexis. Praying for a man named Calvin. Praying for a man named Morgan who's facing a major surgery. This is related to Flo and Brian. Praying for Morgan, his wife Marie. Facing a major surgery today. Many unspoken needs. Many needs I can't share with you publicly. But I think all of us today have something going on in our lives, in our family, that the Lord needs to minister to. There's, there's, not, there's nothing we can do. We can show up. We can pray. We can help. But there's things beyond our control. Maybe you're facing something like that today. Let's trust in Jesus Christ, who is the Alpha and the beginning and the ending, the Omega. He's the one who is called faithful and true. He is the one who never sleeps nor grows weary. He is the one who is the uplifter of our head. He is the one who touches us and we are healed. He is the one who speaks to us and brings peace to our heart. He is the one that can do exceedingly abundantly more, the Bible says, than we can ask or imagine. 
today let's lift up our needs to the Lord would you lift up your need to him as we pray and finish off this service today Lord today from the very beginning we confess that we put our trust in you Lord all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is shifting sand you are the rock the book of Isaiah says you are the rock of ages and if we are standing on you we are given perfect peace Lord a peace that goes beyond our understanding a peace that goes beyond our comprehension. We are given a peace that it doesn't make any sense to have it. And that peace that comes from you guards our hearts and guards our minds. Lord, today for every name mentioned, Lord, especially the children today on this list, Lord, we lift them to you. And Father, we give every worry of cancer. We give every worry of disease. We give every worry of heart trouble. We give every worry of surgery. We give every problem and pain to you today. For you are the one who can take the pain. You are the one that guides the surgeon's hands. You are the one that can work a miracle and make a way where there seems to be no way. And so, Lord, this day, in this moment, we confess our hope and faith in you. And say, Lord, heal them in the name of Jesus. Touch them in the name of Jesus. Bring peace in the name of Jesus. Restore that which is broken in the name of Jesus. Father, today I think of the many families in our province who are going through sorrow and grief because of tragedy. Father, it seems like every time we listen to the news, there's another accident, there's another tragedy. Lord, our province is hurting today. And so Holy Spirit, go to each family, even right now. Go to families on the West Coast. Families in Labrador, families in central Newfoundland, Lord, families here on the East Coast, <coughs> minister and touch and, and meet the needs of each one. Lord, today we know that when we pray, you hear us. The scripture says you never see the righteous forsaken, nor their children begging for bread. The scripture says, cast all of our cares upon you, for you care for us. And so, Lord, this day, that's what we do. We leave it in your hands, knowing that you are faithful knowing that you're true, and knowing that you're good. All of our lives, you've been so good to us. Father, thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for the ministry this morning. And Father, bless us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you show your appreciation to the ministry this morning? We we'll hope to see you at 4 o'clock this afternoon. But can we sing that chorus just one more time? All my life. You have been faithful. And after we sing it, you are dismissed. Just stick, unstick yourself from the chair if you can. And meet in the, in the parking lot. God bless you. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Let's leave the service today with that, the goodness of God. God bless you. Hope to see you at 4 p.m. this evening at the East Link Event Center inside this evening. God bless.